pizza is already a perfect food. That, like, done. Full stop, we're done. We mastered pizza. It's the perfect food. You don't need to create these other things. Like, I'll have a chicken sandwich if, I, if I'm craving a chicken sandwich, or I'll have pizza. Yeah. You don't have to put them together. Yeah. <laughs> They're totally fine on their own. <laughs> We're back, episode five, Charred, a New Haven Pizza Show. It's Kevin Begley. We got Frank Zabsky. We're here at New Haven Pizza Place in the Woodmont area of Milford and the Adams Shopping Center. And uh, this place is really nice. This place is really cool. I started coming here when they first opened up, probably yeah. uh, three, four years ago. And to be honest with you, I kind of never really said much about it because this was like my hidden secret place. That I could go. <laughs> now, now everybody's going to know after this episode comes out. Um, but Frank, you're fresh off the pizza expo in Las Vegas. I want to hear about this. Uh, give us, I know you've been posting on, you know, the pizza group on Facebook and your socials, but we want to hear about the experience uh, about the whole like pizza expo. Yeah, Kevin, it, it, it was just it was crazy. Um, so before I say any more, I'm going to preface by saying that I'm not a big traveler. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm definitely more of an outdoors guy. I like to do my own thing. Um, and I'm not a big flyer. I mean, I have flown, I will fly, but I'm not crazy about it. Yeah. Um, so I was tentative going to begin with. Plus I had a big demo that I was doing for New Haven pizza, which I'll explain in a little while. But the bottom line is it was a great experience. Yeah. It was intense. It was super busy. It was super dry. Like I couldn't drink enough water. Um, but it was just, um, you know, I think it was 10 or 15,000 people over three days that convened in Las Vegas and there were people from all over the world. Had you been to Las Vegas before? Never. Oh, that was your first time? Yeah. Wow. And I tell you that I will not go back there other than going to Pizza <laughs> Just for Expo. the Pizza Expo? Yeah. <laughs> I was saying maybe next year we could do a live podcast from the Pizza Expo. We're going to make that happen. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure we could. Um, everything is huge out in Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. I mean, the buildings were just, I can't even describe it to you. You look down a street and it's like a mile to the end of the, the block, city block that we would have around here. Yeah. And the, 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 the signs are enormous. Everything is just crazy. There's another part of Las Vegas, which is the original part, and I forget what they actually call it. Uh, old Las Vegas, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of like very different from the Vegas that from the we strip. stayed at. Right. Um, we stayed at, you know, we were at the convention center in Las Vegas. Now, the Pizza Expo, for people who don't know, it's not really for like pizza fans. It's more for the industry, right? There's a lot of pizzeria owners and, uh, and pizza equipment type companies, that type of thing. Ovens. 100% correct. So you have to be someone associated to the pizza industry, whether you own a pizzeria mm -hmm. or you sell mixers or flour or tomatoes or all that other stuff. Um, yeah, so it's people from all over the world that have some connection to the pizza, but not consumers. Okay. And I'm sure a couple of them sneaked in here and there, but um, you know there were demos all day about different tomatoes and different pizzas and how the mixer works and stuff like that. And that's primarily what it was. Another big aspect of Pizza Expo is they have a pizza competition. Hmm. So they have a bunch of categories of pizza. Nice. Neapolitan, traditional, non-traditional. Uni actually had their own little competition. They have an acrobatic competition, which was r probably the highlight, one of the highlights of Pizza Expo. What is that? Like dough toss? Is that dough tossing? That type dough of thing? tossing. <laughs> like style? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like dough tossing slash dancing. Okay. <laughs> um, to music. And a lot of people get dressed up. Like there was a guy dressed up as a leprechaun. And then there was a bunch of group of people and they all kind of dressed up in these golden kind of gilded costumes. And it was really fun. Um, it was one of the things my, my wife and I, my wife went with me nice. and she kind of did her own thing and I did my own thing. But we kind of butted heads a little bit on this one thing. But I'm happy that I went for that acrobatic competition yeah. because it was one of the best things I saw. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, you're at your demo specifically, what was it sort of billed as? Was it how to New Haven style pizza, how to make New Haven style pizza? What was the title of the demo? So the title of the demo is basically New Haven style pizza. Um, the cool part about the demo, so Pizza Expo has been around for 40 years. Yep. This was the first time they ever had a New Haven style pizza demo ever. Wow. Um, so I was super happy, super excited that I was actually able 
to give that demo. But I basically, I didn't have, you know, I had an hour. So I went over really quickly how to do the dough, how to do the sauce. I gave him a little bit of pizza history. Nice. Kind of one of the funniest things about it was, and I learned, this was my first time at Pizza Expo and my first time doing a demo there. And it was just me. Most demonstrators have people that help them. Yeah. So I made a couple pizzas before my demo started. And there's a video out there, which is kind of funny, that I literally took the pans of pizza and put it out front. And there was just this. Oh, it was like a scene. horde. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's like zombies. <laughs> yeah. They're all coming up to get it. <laughs> so hopefully next year I'm going to be back and doing another demo. I'm going to bring some help yeah. so that we can feed more people. Um, but it was kind of crazy. And the other thing that really was really cool was um, before the demo, there were probably 10 people. And if you can envision like bleachers at a football game or a yeah. basketball game or anything. And so you look out and the bleachers are empty and there's 10 people. And this is probably about 10 or 15 minutes before my demo. And you're like getting and nervous. I'm like, well, I'm getting nervous <laughs> and I'm also getting like, oh geez, I came all the way out here for 10 people. <laughs> well, literally five minutes later, and I'm not telling you that every seat was taken, but 90% of the, all the bleachers were taken. Wow. And I was like, Holy crap. And then becomes another kind of nervous. <laughs> you see a big oh, yeah. crowd out there. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I got everything out that I wanted to get out, but I didn't get it out particularly in the order I wanted to. But it's really, you know, I do like speaking in public, and I've done a bunch of it. Yeah, you're I'm good at it. Fairly comfortable. But when you see hundreds of people, oh, yeah. you know, it's a different it's different thing. than doing your class where yeah. you just have a handful, but you must have been able to use some of the same stories or jokes or things like that to a new audience because they haven't really heard the New Haven stuff before. Yeah, you know? and I did, and I made some of them laugh. You know, <laughs> some people, I think Eddie, Eddie Murphy could have showed up there and they wouldn't have laughed, but, you know, that's just what it They're is. They're just serious pizza people. They're serious like, I'm, pizza I'm here people. to learn about pizza. There's no comedy in this. <laughs> yeah, and then people were coming up to me, which is really cool, but I was making the pizzas and doing other things, and they're asking me all these questions. And I tried to be as polite as I possibly could, but some people have no filter, you know, yeah. they don't understand that, you know, it's, it's, uh, now, stressful. did you meet any other like pizza industry people like do any networking or you know, was there time to do that? Or was it just sort of, you did your demo and it was just busy, busy, busy. Yeah. So there was time to do that. And I, I met some interesting people. So at pizza expo for me, the number one thing was to do the demo. Yeah. But I also did a pizza competition, non-traditional category, because I couldn't get into traditional. So I did a potato, bacon, rosemary. Ooh. Came in 47th out of 100 in the whole world. That's, I mean, that's not bad. It's a start. Yeah. Um, but the other thing I did, which was really cool, was I um, was a judge for the first time at the Pizza Expo. Oh, wow. That's neat. So I couldn't judge the categories I was in, but I judged the other ones. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, one of the guys that came up to me, which was really cool, and I don't know whatever's going to happen to this, but someone from Papa John's came up <laughs> and said they're considering doing New Haven style regional. Oh, that's funny. So obviously all these big pizza chains have regional departments. Yep. And so, you know, I talked to him for a while. We'll see what happens. If now, the, were, now the question with that would be, would they want to do it regionally in the Northeast near New Haven or in places that aren't near the Northeast to kind of get the style out there to other places? You know, so you do it in like the Southwest because they don't know New Haven style. Yeah. And they, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. It's a good question. My guess is they would start in the Northeast. Yeah. Just because it's kind People of a known entity. Yep. And probably use it as a test bed. But, you know, I don't know. We'll see if they contact me again. That's um, neat. And I met another really cool guy from uh, Middle Buy, which is the company that made the oven down at Frank Pepe's. And oh, I wow. talked to him for a while and we talked about this and I've had this idea for a while is to make like a portable coal oven yeah. for like the consumers. So like the Uni, but uses coal so, it, so you can get the New Haven style? Yeah, so, you know, I don't know exactly what it's gonna be, but it would be mo most, more like a kit. So okay. it wouldn't be something that you would buy, take out of the box and fire up. It would be like, you would buy the fire bricks and the frame of it and put it together. Oh, you kind of build, it's almost like a backyard oven that you build yourself. Or like an erector like set. Yeah. Kind of yeah. For, for so a cola. more of a permanent thing at your house, but you build it. Yeah, but something small, maybe like yeah. the size of these, you know, this table. It's like Ikea meets Uni. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. I mean, it sounds like you had a great time at that expo. I did. Yeah. I had a great time. It was really, you know, it was just, I was shot. You know, at the end of the week, I was shot. 
and it was your first time. So I feel like that's a good a, a building block to next year. And, you know, the, I'm sure there's people who've been going to that expo, you know, the, people doing demos and stuff oh, for yeah. years and years and years. So to build off that and get that New Haven style out there to the people at the Pizza Expo, that's great. Yeah, you know, and I got stopped a bunch on the when I was walking around and stuff. And, you know, it's just a good feeling. Yeah. Um, and they're like, oh, you're the New Haven pizza guy. And so, uh, you know, part of what I like to do is evangelize New Haven pizza. Yeah. Um, and so it's starting to catch on. We have a lot more work to do, but it's starting to catch on. Now, you mentioned Papa John's. I want to talk real quick about Domino's. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> you, you did post... Um, on April Fool's Day, <laughs> a, a little thing about Domino's, yep. uh, it, which was kind of similar to what you were just saying about yeah. Papa John's. Like they're, they're going to do a New Haven style, obviously a joke. But we were talking the other day about how Domino's, and there was this big article like three or four years ago about how Domino's completely revamped their recipe, how they make their pizzas. And now it, it almost like Domino's used to be a joke to people who like really love great pizza. But now it's like it kind of, people are kind of into it again. Like Domino's is like a marketing, you know, they're obviously one of the biggest yeah. companies ever. But um, and, y and you've recently had Domino's, right? Yeah. So before I get into that story. So my first uh, memory of Domino's is when I went when I went away to college, I went to Eastern Connecticut, which is a Willimantic. Long story short, you know, our big night for alcohol for adult beverages was Thursday night. <laughs> right. Thursday, Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we used to rely on Domino's to be able to get us to get up <laughs> to night. get to class the next day. Yep, <laughs> yep. And we didn't really care what it tastes like as long as it soaked up some of the alcohol. That yeah. We yeah. Had. That's funny. <laughs> but most recently, and I will tell everyone, and I've been pretty open about this, you know, I have Domino's probably three, four times a year. Yeah. But I call Domino's for me situational pizza. <laughs> I like and that. And I will term. give you an example. So the example of situational <laughs> pizza is prior to going to Las Vegas, I went out to Florida um, to my one of my oldest friend's daughter got married. Okay. We came back late. Again, the whole travel thing, not big for Frank Zabsky. <laughs> and it was like ten o'clock at night and I started getting hangry. Which is hangry for food. Oh, I'm <laughs> yeah. hungry for food. <laughs> And so my wife and I were going back and forth. And bottom line is when we got home, we had Domino's waiting for us. This was probably about three weeks ago. Yeah. And, you know, it was good. You know, they definitely upped their game. I also do a little stock market stuff. And unfortunately, I missed this one. But probably eight, ten years ago, if you bought Domino stock, I mean, you made a tremendous amount of money because after they did the whole revamping. Yeah. Which is what you which said. Which I think was. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was 2018 or 19, maybe. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. You know, the stock price went up, the volume went up, and, you know, it's good. And they have these things called, um, I call it crazy bread. I know that's Little Caesars. Uh, <laughs> cheesy bread. Oh, right. Yeah, that's delicious, Cheesy too. bread yeah. is awesome. And, um, you know, the pizza in a pinch is good. I like what you said about situational because you, know you know you're not getting, obviously, a, a Frank Pepe's, a Sally's, a, you know, the, the best of the best. But it is a late night slice, you know, maybe a Friday night. If you have young kids, you're just trying to, you know, yeah. quickly get dinner on the table. Like, it, it, there is situational, you know, situations where you get the dominoes. <laughs> That's the best word I can describe for it. <laughs> and I will say, of all the chains, I think I like them the best. Of all the, like, national sort of, I don't want to call it fast food, but like the national chain, yeah, like Papa John's, the Little Caesar. John, yep, yep, yeah, so yep. I think that, uh, I think Domino's is, is the one. Now, the other funny Domino's story, have you heard about the pizza meter before in D.C.? Only what you told me about. Yeah, so th there's this. I had never heard about this. Someone sent it Which to me. Which is amazing. Someone DM'd me this story. Because now I'm, I'm starting to get like DMs about pizza stories all the time. Sure. Because everyone who I know, who I'm friends with or family knows I'm into pizza. But now like people, a lot of my followers are like, hey, you should talk about that. Like sending me pizza <laughs> stories. Yeah. Um, so this one was I thought was really interesting. So this was back in the 90s. There's a guy. I don't know if he still owns all these. But he owned like 50 to 60 Domino's locations in the DC metro area. Mm -hmm. uh, and every time there would be a big military situation going to happen, he would know ahead of time because they would order like 200 pizzas to the Pentagon, to the White House, to different places in DC, like the night or two nights before. Yeah. And then sure enough, a couple of days later, so like the Gulf War and something like would all, something would happen. So he <laughs> had this little meter and he didn't really tell anybody about it because he liked knowing. And he would know every single time something would happen. And then 
as the years went on, it started to get out and it started. So then they realized the government realized we shouldn't do this anymore. No good. So ever since then, <laughs> now if they're going to order food, they have to order from multiple places in DC. So they're not tipping off that yeah. <laughs> they get a hundred pizzas from Domino's and some cheesy bread coming. I mean, it's a crazy story, but it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, it, um, then I'm even thinking to myself, well, okay, so if they didn't even go out to the local pizzerias and they, say they made pizza, within the white house they would still be able to track if they bought a lot of flour and those so there's you know kind of no way to get around it but it's actually and it also really speaks to the simplicity of the 90s where it's like just order dominoes like i feel like now there's so many filters that it would go through like you oh it's coming to the pentagon it has to go through this and we have to make it here in oh, yeah. security which back then it was like who's got the dominoes number right. we're gonna be up late tonight <laughs> 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 Such a funny story. And I wonder if that guy, I got to find out if that guy still owns all those franchises. He must. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he must. Um, most of the franchises are owned by, you know, a small amount of people, but they own a bunch of them. Yeah. So yeah. I think the same thing with McDonald's and Burger King and all that other stuff. And yep, so, yep. you know, there's definitely a bunch of money in it for sure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the other thing, speaking of Domino's and pop-up places with multiple locations, we know here in Connecticut, Frank Pepe and Sally's have been expanding mm -hmm. uh, to other parts of the country, to Florida, to different states. Um, and, you know, there's been mixed reviews, to be honest. Like, I know a couple people have posted videos on social about the Florida, you know, Pepe's, and then some people post a positive review. And But I feel like my thought is that people are being so critical of these places because they're comparing it to New Haven. So do you think that people should be comparing it to the original or should they just do for what it is? Like it's the Florida Peppies. Yeah, so I have deep thoughts about this and I don't <laughs> want to spend too much time on it. Right. But here's kind of, I'll give you the Frank's Reader's Digest version of this. Yeah. And I want to make this clear because a lot of people, there's misinformation out there. So Peppies um, was not sold. It's still in the family. Yep. They do have investors, but they have... It's still mostly family owned. Sally's was sold. So there's a food service company that now owns Sally's. So that's a big difference, yeah. Right, and everyone says franchise, franchise, franchise. Neither one of them are franchised mm. at all. Franchise is a very different con business concept than what they've done. Um, I can speak to Pepe specifically from the standpoint that there were a lot of family members that there, there, there's a, an axiom or a saying in business called stabbing at the same bull. Yeah. There's only so much meat and blood you can get from one bull. So there were a bunch of family members in Pepe's and Roselli's and, um, you know, there's a bunch of different laughing, uh, Bamonte. And it was probably hard for them to make a living out of one or two spots. True. So I think they had the idea of say, hey, let's go out and start expanding, you know, what our great, great grandfather did and I think it's really cool being an entrepreneur myself. If you can have multiple generations of family members making a living. Yeah. Um, again, Sally's is a bit different. Uh, I think the consiglios are somewhat still involved, but they're, you know, the food service company is doing their own thing. But to your point, and this is just going to be a bone of contention and <laughs> it's not going to be, it, it's just going to be my opinion. Um, I've spoken at length to, Peppy specifically, I'll call it the higher ups. And all they really want is their great, great grandfather's legacy to continue. They try really, really hard and their goal every day when they get up and they open up these places, when I say places, the expansion restaurants, mm -hmm. they, their goal is to have that pizza taste just like it came out of the oven in Worcester street. Yeah. The reality of it is, and just being reasonable, you know, it's never going to be exactly the same. Right. Um, and the other thing, too, is that especially people that grew up around here like me, we've got 30, 40, 50 years of going to that place when it was a mom pot kettle. Yeah. Um, so we have these memories and these tastes stuck in our head that we can't get out. That's a big part of it. It really is. Yeah. And I say this with all due respect. I think if Frank Pepe came back from the grave and started making pizzas again, there'd be still people saying, well, it's not the same. <laughs> right. It's just the nature I, of, of humans. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and someone's always got to argue about something and this and that and the <laughs> other thing. And so my feeling is, you know what, just embrace the fact that they were able to take something that is really iconic and expand it. I think is fantastic. Yeah. And the last thing I'll say is that outside of Connecticut, the other places that they've expanded, 
they never had the Pepe's experience. Right, true, that's a good point. So in the other areas, the people are super happy. Yeah. And I always say this at, at, at the end, they're not continuing to expand for no reason. Right. They're selling pizza. Totally, because yeah, Massachusetts, Florida, there's, they're, yeah, they're expanding like crazy. Yeah, they're in Maryland, I mean, they're all over the place. And you know, I think they have plans to go even farther. And the same thing with Sally's. I think Sally's has been a little bit um, s slow to kind of, they've announced a bunch of places. Yeah, and they've opened some within Connecticut. Yep. I've seen like up near Hartford area and Stanford and- uh, Yeah, I think they have one in Fairfield. Yep, Fairfield. So yeah, so it seems like they're starting there and then going, you know, but like you said, like you were saying earlier, evangelizing New Haven style pizza. If you can get the New Haven style out to people around the country, that's just, that, that can only be a good thing. Yeah, it's gonna take time. Yeah. You know, that's really what it's gonna be. It's gonna yeah. take time. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens. All right, let's run through some pizza news real quick. Um, I saw this story a couple weeks ago, Mike's in Fairfield, Mike's Pizzeria, which if you live in the Fairfield area, yep. had been around for 50 plus years, I believe. And um, they announced that they're closing down and there's gonna be, a, I think a chicken restaurant going in there I next. I think so. <laughs> which I said that they should put a, a, a pizza on the menu at the chicken place <laughs> just as like a tribute to Mike's Pizzeria like yeah. the it could be a chicken pizza yeah, yeah like the like the Mike's chicken pizza that's like the one thing on the menu to like remind people of the legacy of Mike's so a quick story about that so I I grew up in West Haven um I moved to Fairfield for one year and then I moved got married moved to Milford but long story short when I moved to Fairfield I literally was right around the corner from Mike's so oh, okay. I used to go there all the time nice and the pizza was good, but coming from kind of New Haven, you know, it was a Greek style pizza. But what was really good, and I could taste it right now, <laughs> they, they made this awesome chicken parm. And Ooh. the old school chicken parm was when they put the chicken parm on there and they put it under the broiler with the um, sub or grinder or whatever you got on it. And it was just like, I could eat three of them at that time. Yum, that sounds really good. So that I'm going to miss, and I haven't had it for a while. But yeah, I mean, Mike's was iconic in Fairfield. Now, on the other side of the coin, you know, we talked last episode about, you know, new places opening, new pizza places. So that you don't see it a lot. You see a lot of the legacy type places either expanding, um, things like that, but ne not like a brand new pizza pizzeria. Right. Um, but there is one that you were mentioning in Derby that's going to be opening. Yeah, I think it's called Bartone's. And I've... I go up and down 34 often, and it's right kind of where Home Depot is on 34. Mm -hmm. And I saw the sign in there for a while, maybe a year, year and a half. And I'm like, oh, I, you know, I don't know what happened. Ironically, and I don't think I told you this, I got a call right before I went to Las Vegas from some guy in California <laughs> who wanted to know what I thought about Bartones. And it kind of, it didn't really ring a bell. He's like, oh, 134. I'm like, so we started talking and long story short, I guess he knew or know someone there. I didn't know that they opened. I have not tried it. Last we spoke, I said I was supposed to try it, but I didn't try it. I've seen pictures of it and it looks solid. I'm definitely going to check it out. You know, any place that has our beats, I got to check out. Yeah, we'll have to report back. We'll have, Absolutely. To, we'll have to try it. And we'll maybe we'll even have a show down yeah, there. Yeah, you know? we'll knows? let the people know. Um, we were talking about Domino's. This reminded me of this. So places that aren't pizza places, the KFCs of the world, uh, the Chick-fil-A's, yeah. th this has been in the news recently that they've created these like Franken pizza menu items where it's chicken mixed with pizza. I think they call it like a chitza or something. Junk. You're Junk. out on that? You're completely yeah. out? Oh, yeah. Would you even try it? I wouldn't even try it. <laughs> Just I, on principle. I feel the same way. And you see this all the time. You see like the, the cupcake pizzas and the pizza cones. And it's like pizza is already a perfect food. The, like done. Full stop. We're done. We mastered pizza. It's the perfect food. You don't need to create these other things. Like I'll have a chicken sandwich if, I, if I'm craving a chicken sandwich or I'll have pizza. Yeah. You don't have to put them together. Yeah. <laughs> They're totally fine on their own. And I think Subway had pizza at one point. Um, <laughs> but I think a lot of these people and the fact that we're actually talking about it proves that it works right it's a I marketing think they do it just because they know it's so outlandish it's a marketing yeah. plan but i don't know if it's just because we started this show but i feel like pizza pizza's always been popular obviously but it feels like in the in the zeitgeist it's even more popular right now in the national conversation because why would kfc just launch this i don't know what it is but it feels like pizza's just going crazy right now all yeah. these places trying to capitalize off it you know I, I i really don't know why but there's definitely a buzz pizza yeah. in general you know, I think pizza is a lifestyle food. Everyone is busy all the time running around. And it's just, 
it's easy thing to buy and eat. Yeah. And I think that's probably part of it. Now, the last part of the news, which relates to this too, is that with the popularity of pizza, a lot of these breweries are starting to release, I saw a pizza flavored beer, yeah. which I'm into having a nice, you know, whether it's like a nice light lager. I like light beers with pizza. Mm -hmm. So a nice light beer with a pizza from like a local brewery is fantastic. I don't know if we need to put the pizza flavors into the beer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm out on that part. I'm into naming a beer like a pizza named beer and having sure. it be like a light beer that goes with your pie. But I don't know. Are you in on pizza flavored beer? So quick story, as quick as I can be. <laughs> I had this idea, and I'm not saying they stole my idea because I don't own any ideas. <laughs> right. Um, but I had this idea about a year, year and a half ago to make like New Haven style tasting beers. Hmm. I know nothing about beer at all. <laughs> I contacted a couple local breweries and another school, which I won't mention. Bottom line is I got Ugats. <laughs> People either thought I was crazy or never got back to me or maybe they said, oh, that's a good idea and they started doing it. But point being is I think it's a really cool idea. I'm not a big drinker. Um, and I, if I do drink, it generally isn't beer because I drank enough beer when I was younger. <laughs> but I would definitely try it, you know, and I think it's just fun. Yeah, I would try it once maybe, and who knows, maybe maybe I'd like it. But I feel like the process of brewing beer and making pizzas is, is kind of similar because you're making the dough, you you have all the, the measurements. Fermentation. Yeah, yep. it, it, that goes hand in hand. And again, I, I would like, maybe they could name beers after New Haven style terms, uh, some local brewery. But yeah, I don't know if I'm like a marinara sauce, like <laughs> cheesy beer. I don't know if that's if that's my thing. <laughs> yeah, but it'd be an interesting taste. You know, yeah. like a pepperoni pilsner, or I don't know. Something, I mean, <laughs> oh, that's a good like name. That, you know? We got to tell somebody. <laughs> Two roads. <laughs> Tribus, who's out there? Yeah, we got <laughs> New England. Uh, all right, so that's episode five. Episode six, we're going to talk to Arsenio, the owner of New Haven Pizza Place yep. here in the Woodmont area of Milford. Yep. And um, thanks, everyone, for listening today. Make sure to subscribe. YouTube channel's going crazy. Yep. I feel like we got a lot of subscribers we're growing, on baby. there. We're growing, baby. We're growing. Share, please. At Chard New Haven on everything, all the socials, YouTube, podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts. And thanks so much for listening and watching. And remember, it's not burnt. It's charred, baby. A beat, a beat, it's time to